Welcome back to Biggie Outdoors at the top of the hour. We welcome in those just tuning in. And for those of you who have been listening, we're headed into another great hour of outdoor radio with Biggie and Brandon here at Biggie Outdoor Studios. This hour is brought to you by one of our great supporters at Outdoor Edge Knives and Cutlery, makers of the swing blade and other great tools for the outdoorsman. Check them out at OutdoorEdge.com and get yourself one of the best hunting knives or cutlery sets you'll ever own. Also buy Koala Buck Coolers, portable walk-in coolers for the sportsman, a great way to save your game when you're traveling on a hunt and want to keep your meat cool. Find them online at KoalaBuck.com. Now, stay tuned for more Big E Outdoor Radio. Check out Adrenaline Hydrographics in a Cedar Creek Mall. Put a custom finish on anything you want. Choose from over a thousand different patterns and colors, including camos, wood grains, carbon fibers, and custom prints like flames, skull patterns, and flag scenes. They can customize your Harley parts, baseball helmets, and hard hats. Guns and gun stocks, fishing poles, deer skulls, coat racks, you name it. Pretty much anything you can paint, they can put a custom pattern on for you. Adrenaline Hydrographics in the Cedar Creek Mall. And we are back, and Big E is playing on his phone again. I'm always on my phone. What are you yeah. talking about? I have to keep in touch with the world. Yeah, but not while you're driving. That's the one thing that really scares me, is you try to keep in touch with the world while you're driving. And I do. I do a good job of keeping in touch with the world while no, I'm driving. No, yes. you do not. Well, I mean, you do a good job at keeping in touch, but you don't do a good job at car- uh, uh, driving. I cannot talk today. No, you cannot. And and actually, I should have beat you to the ground during the break. Why? What did I do? You said go to the Seahawks defense. <laughs> you and your fantasy football league. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's up with that? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm I'm in pretty deep now with all of the listeners. I thought you were a Packer fan, diehard Packer fan to the end. What's up? There's money involved. Look, I don't care. There's no money in the world that would make me say something like that in the air. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Oh, man. No, I still, I hope the Packers pull off a victory today. We really need it because how many how many games in a row now have we lost to Seattle? we got to prove to them once and for all who is the king of the castle. I believe it's three. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I've not I've not had any love for Seattle ever since our uh, Two coach, of them in the, playoffs. the coach that I wish to remain nameless went there. Well, you but, ever want to call Mike Holmgren out? No, oh. I, I got no love for that guy either. Never since he did that, that was it. Yeah, yeah. So did you? Are you? Did you get your tickets for the Thanksgiving Day game, Patrick? The Packers and the Bears Thanksgiving Day. No, I didn't. They but. will be retiring Brett Favre's jersey number. Oh, that's another guy. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> There's still a lot of people in Wisconsin that are Brett Favre fans. I don't know how you can be a Brett Favre fan after what he did. They should retire his jersey on right. a on a marshmallow roast. Are you talking about the sexting? Because that was when no, he was playing him with the Jets. Leaving just uh, any all of all of his. I'm going to retire. Oh, no, I'm going to stay. I'm going to retire. I'm going to stay. And then it's, it's ridiculous. He should forever be known as a high school football coach. That's it. He does have one record that I don't think will ever be broken, though. What's that? Is that an old Elvis record? No. Number of interceptions? No. What's that? The only quarterback that has beaten all 32 NFL teams. Huh. What about Peyton Manning? That, no, because he actually had to leave the Reedy Packers to be able to beat himself. Yeah, but Peyton but, Manning he spent most of his career in Indianapolis, and now he's playing with Denver. Oh, I I don't think he's ever. Beat, I don't. Beat I'd have. I don't I, think he'd be able to beat himself. Yeah. What about Jay Cutler? <laughs> Jay Cutler, he yeah. can't. He can't beat anybody. <laughs> he, be, he beats himself every week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah does it count? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, oh. there you Man. go. That's, That's only guy. one team. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, how many people kind can of say re- that? They beat kind the of same a, team every week. <laughs> it's kind of a reverse accomplishment, yeah. but I think he's still doing it. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good count. I mean, that it's guy good comes, good. Out every, <laughs> comes out every... Comes out, yeah. He needs to be coming out. <laughs> every season, he goes out there and he plays for 16 different teams every season. <laughs> That's exactly what I was just going to say. <laughs> oh, man. You don't think that some of the other teams are, like, paying Chicago to keep him, do you? Yeah, <laughs> they're like, "Hey, give the guy a raise. We'll all pitch in and pay it for you." <laughs> oh man, that would work. <laughs> Jay Quitler. <laughs> you know, I like the uh, statement that after that last uh, that last that recall election that we had a while back. Yeah. In the state of Wisconsin here. And Scott Walker went on Twitter and he said, well, after this last election, I now have more wins in Wisconsin than Jay Cutler ever did. <laughs> hey, don't make him spew. That, 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 that's the expensive equipment. Yeah, Biggie almost shot his coffee all over the place there. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's... <laughs> I didn't hear that, but that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I actually... the, the it, it made the um, ESPN... I was watching ESPN, and all of a sudden that thing came up on there. They were talking about it, and I had a picture on my phone. The longest time I had a picture on my phone of it, and, and I think funny. I finally cleaned it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. More wins than Cutler. <laughs> After this last election, I have more wins in Wisconsin than Jay Cutler ever did. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was cool to that see. That would go a long ways, actually, with voters, you know. Yeah. Well... In just a minute, we're going to have uh, Steve joining us from uh, the Good Outdoor Radio. He's going to be calling in here in our next segment, so that ought to be interesting. We'll find out what's going on down in the the world of the South uh-huh. down there. So uh, Mike Grayheck, our, our good friend from uh, Green Bay, should be getting back pretty soon from Kikuyu Lodge in South Africa. I see. He was knocking them down over there, him yeah, and his family. He, they yeah, were, they were... Taking them down a peg or two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I seen some uh, kudu. I seen some impala. Yeah, the impala that they shot actually was a nice looking impala too. Yeah, it was. It was, a, it was, was already a, starting to spread at the tips. It was a dandy there. Yeah, that it was, was a good looking one for a uh, cape impala. That was a big one. Yeah, yeah. big one. Big on. Was it a big one? Hmm? It's a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's how we order it. Make it. McDonald's drive through. Stop it. I, mean, I want to draw something. Hey, we're out. Uh, we actually got some new, new uh, Big E t-shirts coming too. Some really cool new designs, don't Ooh, we? Yeah, yeah, we do. we do. You're welcome for that, by the way. Welcome for what? That idea. <laughs> you, what do you mean? <laughs> don't you? <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't even go there. <laughs> hey. Hey, what? Sorry. I really don't care if you two you know, decide to make a mess, but you're cleaning up after yourself. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not cleaning up your blood, man. So, <laughs> Brandon is uh, is actually, uh, we gotta, we got to figure out our uh, next traveling hunt here, and then we got to do rock, paper, scissors, figure out who's going to shoot first. That's how we normally do it, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of hunting teams that, you know, see, Brandon and I like to film each other because... Well, we just don't trust anybody else. Yep. I know I know without a doubt when I've got Brandon over my shoulder, it's recorded. It's done. No problem. And Brandon knows that when I'm over his shoulder, without a doubt, it's yep. probably okay. It might be shaky, <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we, we've been filming each other for so long that we've... We got it down. We don't even, I mean, we, we communicate with each other. We know exactly what we're doing. And that is the key, first of all, right there. And the other thing is, is that there's no, there's no, um, uh, je- jealousy or, 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 um, uh, competition between the two of us. It, it's with us, it's more of a, no, no, you, you shoot this time. I'm going to film you. And with a lot of other hunting teams that are out there, they're, consistently 
you you see it where the camera guy is always like you know they want to they want to get their time in shooting and they want to get their time in front of the camera and that's they want to brandon and i've been doing this all our lives together as father and son and more than not we're always trying to push the other guy out there to do the hunt and we have more fun filming each other than we do doing yeah. the hunt ourselves yeah. and you'll see that in a lot of our shows where we actually take more people hunting if you watch our shows there's more shows on our tv show of us taking somebody off the street and putting them out there and him and i doing the filming filming yep. and we're filming yeah. just someone else but when we are filming each other yeah. We communicate really well. We got this really awesome language. It's a good series of clicks, whistles, and guttural tones. And grunts. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your arms aren't long enough for that. <laughs> we we've got uh we do we do we uh we it's funny because you know, in order to make sure that that you're uh, doing things right, you have to you have to know that the cameras on and and things like that and and you gotta you gotta put pride aside and and you also have to not be um af- afraid to be double checked that's that's a problem that a lot of people have nowadays it's like you well, know they hey, get offended when they when get offended somebody asks them you sure it's on is it not on standby is it actually yeah. recording yep and we've had camera people that have been even family and very close to us and they they get all upset because you double check on things and then come to find out they didn't have the darn thing on anyway. They were, they were on standby and they missed a kill shot and you can't double kill an animal. Once it's dead, it's dead. You know, when we're hunting with each other, we always, the, the hunter double checks with the cameraman about all the stuff that he's supposed to be doing and the camera, and then the cameraman double checks the hunter, you know, to make sure that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. You'll hear it a lot of times, especially when we're, we're bow hunting together. We'll actually be whispering to each other, you know, remember your, your anchor point and you know and take your time breathe take your time yep. we're constantly coaching each other and it, it doesn't matter how long we've been doing it we ain't gonna stop we're, we're constantly gonna coach yep. each other whether we're filming or hunting and we'll and we'll let yep. to us making a bad shot or not getting it on film is the worst thing we could ever do we'll let the animal walk yep we won't we won't rush a shot and to have the chance that it's a bad one. Just to, yeah. th- not to take a shot, just to take a shot. Exactly. Right. Yep. Right. For us to come out of the woods and say, yeah, we filled our tag, but we didn't get it on film. Yeah, and we also, and we also won't do that. Yeah, we won't. Yeah, never do that. If it ain't on camera, if, if the camera can't see it, but the shooter can see it, that, that animal will walk every time. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes that, that can make for a long hunt. That's why you got to make sure you got a good team out there in the woods because you don't always get a lot of chances. You got to make sure you capitalize on them. So. Hey, let's take a break. When we come back. Hopefully, we'll have Steve from the Good Outdoors on the line. <laughs> Biggie Outdoors, located at Cedar Creek, is reopening its doors soon after its new remodeling. Home to the area's first and only big game hunting museum, with educational exhibits displaying animals from around the world and facts around the hunters' contributions to their survival. Pick up some unique souvenirs and gifts from the museum and from the Biggie TV shows. Meet the pro staff from Biggie TV and Biggie Outdoor Radio. A great place to stop in with the whole family. And while you're there, book your next hunting trip with the Biggie Outdoors Professional Hunters. With over 21 personal hunting destinations worldwide, you'll be sure to find a quality getaway with the Biggie Outdoors destinations. Biggie Outdoors is also home to Adrenaline High Geographic. Check us out online at BiggieOutfitters.com and register to win a free hunt. Biggie Outdoors at Cedar Creek. Every single day, people just like you are leading happier, healthier lives by working out at Snap Fitness. My name is Carol Wisey. I was overweight, not feeling so good about myself. I just woke up one morning and decided enough's enough. The hardest step is walking into that gym because I'm sure you're going to feel self-conscious. When I walked through the door for the first time, I can honestly tell you I did not feel that way. They have so many different membership options. You don't need to be locked into a long-term contract. My physical health since I started working on Snap Fitness has changed dramatically. I have a lot more energy. I'm happier. It will change your life. It will change your family's life. 
I promise you, if you take that first step and join Snap Fitness, you will not regret it. Fall specials are here at Snap Fitness. Join for only $8.95 during the month of September. And get ready for our open house celebration coming in October with lots of great fun and prizes. Here's your central Wisconsin weather eye forecast powered by weatherology.com. Mostly clear skies this morning. Highs will warm well into the 60s to near 70 by this afternoon. Winds south-southwesterly 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, skies remain mostly clear and lows drop to near 49. Winds south 5 to 10. And Monday will have an abundance of sunshine as highs approach 71. This is meteorologist Phil Jensko for Sportsman 100.5. Right now it's 50. Rob Zombie. Did you say something about Rob Zombie? <laughs> no. We're back. Uh, yeah. I thought I heard something about a zombie. Oh, well, never know. Oh, boy. There we go. Too bad. I don't really have any love lost for the roll tide anyway. I love. I love the tide. I do. They gave us Eddie Lacy. I wash my clothes with Tide. Yeah, that's right. Eddie Lacy. You don't do laundry. Don't lie. You're right. Yeah. That's why you always have to have a good good woman at home to do your laundry. Oh, man. You are so... Oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. The way you word that... Was that a bad thing? Well... Did I just say something wrong? Yeah. Yeah, Uh-oh. you did. Yeah. Oh, definitely not PC. No. What's PC? Politically correct. Oh. Oh, well, you know, I oh. probably got myself in a little bit of trouble again, but oh well. Those are the things that keep life interesting at home, on the home front. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it is what it is, right? Do you hear a train? The one that I'm going to be under or thrown <laughs> in front of? No, I mean, I seriously thought I heard a train. You did. Really? Yes. There's no train track around here, is there? Yeah, there is. There is? Yeah, on the other side of Athletic Park. Oh. You no, know, it runs right along the river there? Oh, yeah. That I, is- I don't even know where we are. I'm surprised I can find this place week after week. <laughs> Listen, we we only survive in the country. When you bring country boys into the city, we have to use a GPS. I take the same way in and the same way out every day because I'm afraid I'll get lost if That's I right. take a turn. And the thing is, is that when you're from when you're country boys, you, you're afraid to even stop and ask for directions in the city. Yeah. And 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 the people in town know you're from the country because they look at you funny when you pull up to the stoplights. They look at you like, like look at all that mud on his truck. Mm-hmm. Did they hear the sirens? Yeah. They think. know they know we're here. Yeah. Here they come. Boy, this is <laughs> I don't know what it is about sirens that makes everybody want to jump up and go to the window. And look. You know. Yeah. In fact, when I lived up north and I heard sirens, I would jump in the truck and follow them. You were a siren chaser. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but granted, you live so far up in the sticks, if you heard sirens, it's probably one of your neighbors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, dang it. There's another house for rent. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> oh, hey, I got to follow them. There's 40 acres going to be for sale for sure. <laughs> I got to get on that. <laughs> man, oh, man. That is uh That brings new tear. That brings a new meaning to the term ambulance chaser. Well, that's it. I, you live so far up north, there's not many people. You hear sirens, it's like, oh, boy, I've got to follow that. Somebody, yeah. Somebody's farm going to be for sale. Mm-hmm. You know, actually, what well, was... If I don't get there first, somebody's going to get it. What was funny about where I lived up there, huh. I lived I lived at the intersection There was of, nothing funny about where you lived. Go ahead. Huh. I lived at the intersection of... Don't say the roads, but anyway. Not only three different townships, but... Yeah. Three different counties. Yeah, he did. And, they, and if, if something went wrong on the road that I lived on, 
This is no lie. It happened two, three times while I lived there that something went wrong on that road or in that area, and they don't know what fire department to send. Even if you call them and tell them, they're like, they, like like, they don't believe you. It's or they an emergency. Sure. Just send all three. Who cares? But they <laughs> And they're like, well, what? what? It's on the road, so like, we're not sure. Do we have to send this county or this county? Yeah. <laughs> Just send somebody for crying out loud. It's, it's, it's a nightmare trying to get them to, to send mm-hmm. something out there. And the thing is, there was actually uh, there was a fire out there. Uh, somebody's house started on fire. And the fire department came out. They went through all this figuring out who was going to go, right? Fire department came out there, put the fire out. Four hours after they left, the fire started back up, and they went through it all again. Well, who do we send? I don't know. Well, you were just here four hours ago for crying out loud. Send them back. Yeah. No, they went through it all again. The house burnt to the ground. It's interesting. I got nothing. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm dead. The only thing standing was the stairway. Do you think that goes on at the intersection the of every, the corner of every county? I don't know. In but it's, it was just, it was it was a perfect, it was it was the perfect layout because the road I lived on, when you got down to the, to the intersection of Highway 8, you had Lincoln oh, County. Here we go. Now we're defining had, it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> And then I lived in Price County, and right across the street was Oneida. We can't drive through them counties anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now they're like, ah, that's a big E show. They called us out. If you see any of them guys, they're going to jail for something. Your tires are low on air. You're coming with us. <laughs> 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 hey, you remember that little comment you made about us yeah. being too stupid to figure out who to send? Well, we know who to send now, buddy. <laughs> Meet Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with you, buddy. Meet, oh, yeah. meet your new but cellmate. It was, Bubba. it was, it was just perfect county lines. I mean, right there where you live. Uh-huh. <laughs> what a joke! Oh, yeah, wow. them three. Yeah, one was it was like this. One was on one side, and two came together like here in the middle. Yeah. Otherwise, there'd be four. I know you were trying to draw it out over there. Yeah. It doesn't come together like a pie. Darn, I was hoping for hi- apple. Actually, this time of year, I'm more of a pumpkin pie kind of guy. Mm. You had to get me going. Mm-hmm. But apple pie, no. I could drink some apple pie with the pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you take, so you take your... S- so you're saying that you take your slice of pie with a sco- couple scoops of ice cream and put it in the blender and mix it up? You know what I just got a hankering <laughs> for? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you have a, a what? I'm sorry. You have I, a, a handkerchief on you? I know. I just got a hankering for some. A, a craving. I don't know why. Quail. Fried quail. Huh. You <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had fried quail in so long, and all of a sudden, I don't know what it is. It just came to my head. Boom, I wanted quail. Your I eyes went. your eyes are, like, wide open, and the way your hair is standing up right now, I don't know. Anybody who's watched Justified, you look you look just like Boyd Crowder right now, the way you were just looking at me, like really? the big eyes and the hair standing up on your head. And I want like, some quail. So we're going to have to go somewhere south and hunt some quail, because I want quail. I know a place to hunt quail in Tennessee, one in Georgia is what I know. Well, all right. We then. need to go get quail. Yeah. Pack up with shotguns. Mm-hmm. I want to try it with the bow. <laughs> we couldn't even hit pheasants with the bow. We sure in heck ain't going to hit no quail. Yeah, you're right. The only good thing is that quail Pack are up in, the shotguns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quail are in cubbies. I wonder if we could put like four or five arrows at once in the bow and shoot them, and then maybe we'd have a chance when they all just go... Pew! Swinging through the air like that. The shotgun. Well, you can't really do four or five at once, but they do have this, the double barrel arrow loader. Yeah, I know, but that's, you shoot one, then you got to come back at the other one and shoot it. By that time, the bird's long gone. We got to figure out a way to fire multiple arrows at once. Like a. Because can you imagine what would be going through that pheasant's mind? He'd be like, "What what the heck was that? Must have been a tribe of Indians out there. (laughs) 
like a semi-automatic crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a new invention. That's all you got to do is come up with that. Yeah. The Expedition yeah. don't have a crossbow yet. Mm-hmm. Probably never mm-hmm. will either. They make they make good bow, and they're just sticking with that. I don't know. I don't have any doubt in my mind that if they made a crossbow, it would be good. I mean, you look at what they do and what they build out there. I mean, no, I know. But it depends on whether they have the desire to do it. You know. Well, that's just it. They don't want to get... Well, I don't know about they, but some a lot of people don't want to get should too, be many, reminding too people, many irons in the fire. Remind people about our, our little uh, giveaway thing that's going on. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, we're doing a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're giving away Expedition... Yeah. Your Next. choice of a uh, biggie hat or an expedition hat. Yeah, and the expedition hat's pretty sharp now, my dear. It's yeah. black and it's yeah. got the neon green and the white and it's got this expedition you could, on it. You could win the expedition hat now, and then you can just come on down and see us at the Big E Outdoor Store uh, and Museum, and you could probably get a pretty sweet deal on a hat. So there you a go. That's hat. how you end up with both of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And but uh, but you and, get a decal, a biggie yeah. decal, and Yep. A hat. Just by? Just by liking. Uh, you don't have to share, but we would appreciate a share, but uh, liking the Big E Outdoor Radio page on Facebook. Or? Or, you can, or you can call in. Call us, yep, yeah. Call Just call us. 715-298-9888. Yes, and when Tim answers the phone, breathe heavy in the phone. Yeah. He likes well, that. There you go. Give him an obscene phone call. Whatever. Give them something to listen to over there. Well, yeah. Because he's mm, yeah. darn sure not entertained listening to mm. us. And then tell him to sign you up for the drawing. Well, there you go. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Everybody that does that during the show, we just extend it. Everybody that does it during the show. Decals and hats. Decals and hats for everybody. Rock on. Tired of the hot summer heat? Time to get those ACs working. Head on in to Thunderlube at their new location, 1015 South 17th Avenue in Wausau. Thunderlube is a full-service center handling tires, brakes, exhaust, tune-ups, and much more. No appointment needed for oil changes. Get a punch card when you get a full service and get your 10th service free. That's Thunderlube, complete auto service center, South 17th Avenue in Wausau. BRB Auto Body knows that protecting your vehicle's value is important. That's why they only offer Linex spray on bedliners for trucks. Linex, the industry leader in bedliners backed by a lifetime warranty, offers unmatched protection against gouges, rips, and tears. No lost cargo space and a rattle free, quiet ride. And BRB Auto Body knows that life without your vehicle can be, at best, very difficult. That's why they offer Premier Rent a Car for your convenience. Premier Rent a Car offers competitive rates for all your rental car needs. No replacement vehicle coverage. When BRB repairs your car, they'll supply you with a complimentary vehicle at no cost. Call BRB Auto Body today at 359-9792 or check them out at brbautobodyinc.com. Expect a quality job from BRB. Auto Body, BRB, Auto Body, BRB, Auto Body. County Highway XX in Rothschild. Looking for the best burger in town? Check out Brews Brothers in Weston, just off Highway 29 at Camp Phillips Exit. Voted best burger in Wausau 2014 and 2015. Fresh burger ground daily from country fresh meats, fresh buns, and 35 draft beers on tap from local and regional breweries. Enjoy fresh cut fries and chips made to order. Open 11 to 11 Sunday through Thursday and 11 to midnight Friday and Saturday. Brews Brothers, Camp Phillips Road in Weston. If you're like most of us, your garage is never big enough. Need some extra room? Go see Denny at the Shed Shop in Elan and Shano. Or maybe you need a new hunting shack or deer blind of your dreams. Again, the Shed Shop in Eland or Shano. Complete quality built sheds, competitive prices, made with treated wood or vinyl, and handcrafted by the Mennonites. Call Denny at the Shed Shop, 715-584-3050. The Shed Shop.
And are we there? Yeah, we're back. Yeah. yeah. We're here. We're here. I'm here. Are you there? I'm here. Are you here? Get, yeah. get up to the microphone. Here. Put that thing in your mouth. It's right here with you. <laughs> hey, we had some more callers during the break. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More people calling and asking for their expedition hats. And and it's funny. You, you start offering to give away free stuff, and all of a sudden yeah, people, people start, start calling, calling you like crazy. Yeah. yeah, You can't get them to talk on air, but oh, they'll call for the free man. stuff in the breaks, yeah. I tell you what. I don't know. This guy that's on the phone right now wants to talk to you, though. He oh, does? All right. What yeah. is his name Steve? Um, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I was calling to see if I won that hat. You want a hat, Steve? We get you a hat. <laughs> no, you actually need one of them new Big E hats we're having made. You're going to like them when they get here. I do. Now, I will wear that loud and proud of here. No, yeah. go. We hey, got I, a couple of new designs. Brandon was down helping me the other morning. We spent, what, about four hours down there tweaking the designs? Yep, I helped them design them, so they're actually going to be the younger generation. Big they're all, they're all no. flat brim. They're flat brim hats. Right. There is not a single flat brim hat in the Big E apparel Line. Thank God. Thank I am God. telling you right now, no. No, 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 no. No, it, it's funny, you know, how we came up and uh, our parents criticized us for this, that, and the other, and now we're old and criticized for the younger generation. But those, <laughs> those flat bill hats, man, I just cannot see the appeal of those. That is just, <laughs> just, just crazy looking. You know, and the thing is, Steve, is they, you know, they... The cool thing is, too, now, I guess, is they want to leave the stickers and the tags on them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what right. in the world? You're not going to return it for crying out loud. <laughs> well, see, nowadays you got to let everybody know you did pay for it. You've you got to keep the receipt or keep the flash tag on the hat, and it's just easy to keep it on the hat, I guess. Well, I, think, I think they leave the tags hanging I'm out gonna, so it looks like they stole it. <laughs> I'm going to one-up them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, I'm gonna start throwing the box on my head. There you and, go. Uh, yeah, this is the box it came in, so how's that? Yeah. <laughs> It's the same principle as the cheese head. It'll just be a uh, hat box. Head. Yeah, it'll show you darn kids. Yeah, the hat's in there, trust me. I'd get it out and show you, but then it wouldn't be worth as much. Yeah. That's, it. That's cool, man. Oh, heck. Cool. Well, you... I, was well, I was well in the southern world. You know, the University of Georgia won big yesterday, and yeah. Alabama mm-hmm. and Auburn both lost. So it's a good day down here in Hayhire, Georgia. Ooh, so the roll tide didn't roll. The roll tide, they, they roll to a stop. Yeah, they uh-huh. roll all right. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. the war, uh, those Auburn war eagles, they're more like war sparrows. Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. so they got rocked and the ball rolled. Yeah, they did. That is not, not a good day for the Georgia or for the uh, Alabama folks then. Uh, huh? That's right. That's right. Anxious to see what the polls indicate there. So, uh College football. Now, you guys, y'all got Wisconsin Badgers up there who I've always liked. How, how did they do yesterday? Do y'all know? Oh, you know what, Steve? I'm gonna. I'm honestly, I cannot even tell you because I slept all day yesterday. I had to work diff- a bunch of weird hours yesterday, so I yeah. Oh, okay. I slept I all day. It. The last time I saw the score, it was like twenty-one to three. Yeah, they were up at halftime. I know. So I'm mm. pretty sure they won. Yeah, they won. <laughs> the Badgers. The Badgers are doing. You no, know, pretty good, pretty good again. But yeah, badgers. A badger is a fierce creature, you know. And I, I like, you know, badgers a good fighter. You know, a bulldog is a fighter. Yeah. And then you got then you got an elephant you know, uh, at Alabama. I don't understand that uh, a roll tied elephant. And you uh, and then at Auburn they're confused. They have they, they call themselves war eagles and tigers, so they're struggling with. Who they want to identify as? So it's, it's, it's just no wonder that state's in shambles when it comes to college football. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. what's that got? What's that got to do with hunting, right? <laughs> Twenty-eight to three, by the way. Oh, that's what. Twenty-eight to three. Okay, good deal. Yeah. We'll just go back. Speaking of fierce animals, did you? I have not talked to my mother-in-law in three weeks, so I just. Have... <laughs> no, but uh, let me tell you, the last time I think I spoke to you about uh, when you called in my show, actually, we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Well, it has been. It is. Uh, it's definitely been spotted many more times since then, and photographed. Uh huh. So the so the uh, the uh, the uh, the ape is real, and uh uh-huh. Now, I can send you some images for comparison to some of your old, uh, you know, photos of your mother-in-law some... for identification purposes, and, and okay. maybe we start narrowing this thing down. I'll send you some uh, 
family photos we got from the two weddings, and you can compare. Let me know if if anybody okay. in those yeah. photos look familiar. Well, they got a uh, they got a thousand dollar reward out, so I'll split it with you if it ends up being your mother in law. So okay. is this an ape, or is this? Are they claiming this thing is Bigfoot? No, it's a monkey. It's a small. Uh, I think it's. <clears throat> I think it's uh, Brandon. I'm not sure, so this may not be accurate. But I think it's a rhesus monkey. I think that's what it is. A, a rhesus monkey. A, a rhesus, yeah. Uh, Does that come? Oh, a research a, monkey. No, rhesus. R h e s u s. I think is the proper spelling. Oh, but, uh, like rhesus, pe- uh, like rhesus peanut butter cups. That's right. It's ignited a uh, you know a firestorm of people posting the Facebook memes and uh, it, you know it shows him riding a bike, you know, stealing the kid's bicycle, uh, you know running off with one of the fat cats. <laughs> Different things like this. It's pretty funny. Huh. huh. Feeling a fishing pole and things like that. He's elusive. He is, huh? Yeah. It's like, like trying to trying to find Steve Nichols when he owes you money. It's just hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> is this it's not wearing any clothes or anything, is it? Just, 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 <laughs> no, it's not wearing any clothes. This is natural native fur. Is it wearing a flat brim hat? <laughs> no flat brim, yeah. I think it's old school bucky. <laughs> <laughs> have a uh, so, how is uh, what what are you guys hunting down there right now besides deer? Well, archery season came in. Excuse me. Ooh. Last Saturday, archery season came in. There's been uh one uh one good buck that I know of. It's a, a mainframe eight point, probably scored about one forty. It was still in velvet, which was kind of uh. Is that that one huge. in town you were telling me about? No, this was uh. This was out in the uh, out in the out in the county, so. Uh, oh. Okay. But uh, no, it's uh, I haven't, not been a. It's still hot, so. <coughs> excuse me. It's still hot, so we haven't seen a lot of movement, really. Uh, been a few does, of course, killed, and some hogs and all. But usually about uh about mid October is when we'll really start, you know, getting a little better bow hunting down here because it cools off some. Mosquitoes and sweat tend to keep keep everybody out of the woods. Uh, well, I gotta say, Steve, I not to not to change the subject back to something else here, but see, we just uh, brought up on the internet here this rhesus monkey. I thought you said racist monkey. <laughs> well, you know, he could be racist because he's only been seen in white neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know the thing. <laughs> the thing. The thing is, is <laughs> oh man, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't realize it was a type of monkey. I, yeah. Yeah, it, thing, it actually yeah. does look a lot like my mother-in-law, just so you know. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, it's, oh, it's, it's, well, it's, yeah, let me tell you, the passion is high down here because, you know, obviously we question. You, I hear you got a little bit of a cough. I think you need to take a swig of the shine. I, well, I got, a, I got a cup of coffee here. I've been battling an upper respiratory infection, but the common man wouldn't even been able to call in for one. Oh, um, it's, a good, uh, it's a good thing it's you. Hey, yeah, you get right. you get a little little apple cider, a little uh, little homemade moonshine there, and you put a well, you know, put a put a couple you know maybe an ounce or two of the moonshine into a nice tall glass of that uh, apple cider. You throw it in the microwave for about thirty seconds, and that'll cure just about anything. Well, I tell you, fourteen Bud Lights didn't help yesterday. It didn't do anything. Fourteen of them, huh? That's it. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Oh. Yeah, that didn't work at all. But, you know, this, this monkey thing, you know what I was saying, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of passionate because if you question someone, you know, hey, did you, are you sure you saw a monkey? They kind of they kind of get defensive. And one of my cousins actually saw the monkey, and I asked him, I, I said, what did it look like? And he said it was, it was kind of, he thought it was about, you know, three feet tall, and it was black, and it didn't have a tail. And all I said was, you know, well, there's a possibility you saw a bear, and he got absolutely mad at me. I mean, I mean, mad, hanging up the phone, man. And, uh, because I, yeah, because I, because I questioned him, and all I said was, I was just saying, is it possible, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. I think it's a baby Sasquatch. Well, I was hoping it would be a Bigfoot, and I was trying to, like, you know, during my interview with him, you know, I was going to go from, the possibility of a bear to the possibility of a skunk ape to the possibility of a juvenile Bigfoot, but I never got that far because it got irritated. 
Wow. Oh, he he hung what? up. He hung up with you on your radio show, huh? Uh, no, it was on my telephone while I was recording it. Oh, okay. So, so, uh, and we're going to play it. And uh, that's, you know, I can't help it if he's an idiot. That's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, the guys in the South are very passionate about a lot of things. If you, uh, well, you know me. I'm passionate about my big feet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're, passionate, you're passionate about your mother-in-law. So. Oh, yeah. Different, yeah, different strokes, you know. Yeah, she's, uh, she's an interesting... So where's the uh, NASCAR race going to be going on this weekend? You know, that? Chicago Land Speedway. Yeah. yeah. Who's on? Who's on the pole? Well, I I don't know who's on the pole. I I missed all the qualifying and everything. And the only thing that I know, because I spent so much time sleeping here in the end of the week and beginning of the weekend, is that uh, John Hunter Nemechek finally got his first win in the NASCAR uh, Craftsman Truck Series. Wow. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. So his dad Joe Niederreck, he you know he uh he's racing the big leagues for a long time. He, you yeah. can always depend on him for running into somebody. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I guess he, always, he survived a fuel mileage. Always seemed to be scare. my man. Always seemed to be my man. He ran into too. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Who was your guy? Well, I, I would we would just do a pool a pool and pick, but uh, I, I like a lot of them. You know, I like uh, I like Jeff Gordon. I like. Dale Earnhardt Jr. I like most anybody that drives a Chevrolet, to be honest with you. There you go. Yeah, and, yeah uh, that's what we're talking. You about. know, and uh, well, down there but, in Southern Georgia, you're going to probably be cheering for Chase Elliott here next year when he takes over the 24 car, huh? Yeah, and then you know, I also saw that oh. uh, yesterday on the news that uh, Joseph Earnhardt, which is uh, which is uh, uh, the grandson of, or, of some somebody around, or not Earnhardt, Joseph. Uh, well, maybe Earnhardt. Anyway, some but somehow connected to the children's racing and uh, you know and all that. He's going to step up and drive a uh, sprint car next year. Real young guy, so that's, that'll be interesting too. Can't, oh. can't remember. You have to Google the information there. But there we go. Yes, they sell it. You know, I, which which I'm not. You know, I don't know. I'm not a fan necessarily of the of the car. You know, so Chase Elliott. Yeah, I don't know. I have to see how he acts. You know, he could turn out to be a a total. Ding dong, like Kyle Busch, you know. So can't yeah. be pulling for him, you know. He's he seems but, uh, he seems to be pretty classy. He's got a good head on his shoulders, like his old man. Yeah, well, I'll uh, you know, he awesome Bill from Dawsonville, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Know, parcel, parcel to him down these parts. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you don't mind hanging on, Steve, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh, yeah, if you hang out, we can we can yeah. uh, shoot the breeze with you a little more later on here. I'll be here, brother. All righty, bro. We'll be right back, folks. Rejection is one of our biggest fears. As humans, our greatest need is to be accepted. So when Ben walked into Jim Creeshock Jewelers and met with Jody, he was looking for someone to accept him. You see, Ben was head over heels in love with Amanda, and he wanted to give her the diamond engagement ring of her dreams. But he didn't feel good about his credit, and he didn't feel good about a past jewelry shopping experience, where another jeweler wouldn't even give him the time of day. But Jody had a different attitude. Instead, she went right to work on getting a credit application filled out. And before he knew it, he was approved for, well, a lot more than he thought he would be. That's total acceptance. So Jody walked him over to the diamond case, and he picked out the ring that would knock Amanda off her feet. We're Jim Creeshock Jewelers, and when you walk in here, you know you'll find it. And you'll be accepted. We're in front of Best Buy on Rib Mountain Drive. And nobody does I do like we do. Attention, Central Wisconsin. There's a huge hail sale going on right now at Stark GM of Merrill. There's just a little damage to some cars on our lot. But there's big savings to be had throughout. Come take a look at all you get. Here are just a couple examples. How about a 2014 GM certified Chevy Cruze for just $11,988 or $188 a month with no... No down payment? That's right, $11,988 or $188 a month with zero down. Or choose from a selection of 2014 GM certified Impalas. Yes, just $11,988 or $188 a month with no down payment. So come to Stark GM of Merrill or visit us at www.starkmerrill.com and enjoy huge hail savings on over 150 vehicles in stock. Hurry, first come, first served. Plus tax title license and fees. Selling price eleven nine eighty eight one eighty eight a month. Zero down seventy two months at two point nine nine percent for well qualified buyers only while supplies last. See dealer for details. 
This segment of Biggie Outdoors is brought to you by Snap Fitness of Wausau. It's time to get in shape, and Snap Fitness is the right place to do it. With two locations in Weston and Wausau, you're never far from a Snap Fitness. Open 24-7 for members with clean and well-maintained equipment. Check out their new location across from Fleet Farm on Wausau's north side with all new machines and equipment. Sign up for some classes or training. Pick up the supplements you need and take advantage of the monthly deals and sign up specials they have going on now. The staff at Snap Fitness is waiting for you to assist you in any way they can. So head on down to Snap Fitness today and get signed up. And we are back. Back so, from where? Well, we're back. What are we back to? We're back. All right. Oh. So, Steve, you still there? I'm still here. That was a quick trip wherever y'all went. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we do that. Well, we're we're I, quick. That's what my that's what we're told all the time. They went to QT. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I actually went uh, I went and uh, looked. I got my NASCAR mobile app on my phone here, and um, qualifying actually got rained out for the Sprint Cup Series, which I. I do remember seeing, I just forgot. And uh, because of that, Harvick starts up front here today. And uh, Kyle Busch, yeah. Kyle Busch kicked some, some tail yesterday, I guess. He he had the uh, he had the pole for the Xfinity race, and he won at the Xfinity race. Wow. So, well. and, uh, and uh, it's Jeffrey Earnhardt who nabbed himself a Sprint Cup ride for 2016. Yeah. Which would be Joseph Jeffrey, same thing. Yeah, Jeffrey Earnhardt would be Dale Jr.'s nephew. How about that? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I knew there was a connection there. I just, I just, I just saw it come across the bottom of the screen, and then get, the, get the whole, the whole thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Well, what do you think about uh, Ahmed clock? I'm sorry. Oh Lord, yeah. I don't know. Brandon's seen that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. His kid made a. Uh, a clock for a science fair sure looked like a bomb to everybody else that looked at it. But uh, oh my goodness, yeah. how'd that go over? Well, it's uh, well enough that uh, our dear president wants to put him in the Oval Office and bring him there because he got his, <laughs> such yeah, a such know. a nice looking clock. Well, I don't know. To me, you know, a lot of things happen. What's that? I'm sorry, I'm coughing, guys. I, oh know. no, that's no problem. I said there must be some strong shine you cooked up there. Yeah, <laughs> Your cough your sounds dog. a lot like a dog bark. <laughs> well, that dog is barking. He will not shut up, so I can't. I mean, he doesn't listen. He's like my wife. He just will not talk oh, man, everybody's uh, in the doghouse this morning. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, what I was saying, I bet you know, I I look at life. What what I like to think, I look at life with common sense and. In this climate, if you feel anything like that, that could be, that could resemble a bomb, let's say. Yeah. And you take, you take it to school, and then they, you get in trouble because you've got it, and then they determine it's not a bomb, then you just, it should be the end of the story. <coughs> they should just, you know, send the bomb, send the thing home and say, don't bring this back to school no more, don't ever do that again. And that should have been the end of the story, in my opinion. No, you know, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Right. For this thing to get blown up to a, a story like this is just, to me, is just uh, it's not incredible. Yeah. yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, there's been some <laughs> there's been some funny Facebook posts going on about that. I don't know if you've seen any of them. Oh yeah, I've seen them, man. The, the one guy, one guy's holding his great, great big. A uh, bomb that comes off of a of a, one of our uh, bomber planes, and his kid, kids hanging onto it says, "Man, I hope they like my clock." <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, so I don't. This world, you know, it, it, we make mountains out of molehills. Yeah, and in the serious issues, uh, doesn't get the press. You know, it, it just uh, and I, it's got to be by design by the liberal media. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to turn the show into political. So box. They all are. They all are. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> it's what somebody it turns said the other day, somebody told me, you know, I was so, you know, getting so jacked up about something. They said, "Why don't you run?" And I'm like, "Are you kidding?" 
the last thing I need to do is someone start digging the bones under my closet. You know what I mean? I can't run. All I can just sit here and talk about other people screwing up. I can't do it myself. Yeah, that's right. I like to keep my closet door shut. Not that I want to be in the closet. I don't want anybody to get don't don't now don't be don't be starting that. Hold room. on now. Yeah, Hold hang on. on. Let's, Hold on. <laughs> do you want to be in the closet or out of the closet? <laughs> let, let's just get this straight. I never was in the closet. <laughs> okay, I just you almost have to be scared now. I've shared a lot of times, but I need to know what I'm dealing with here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's another story. That's another political story. <laughs> hey, how about them Packers? What's the yeah, answer? right. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, we were talking about the hunting situation down there by you. Yeah. You know, you know, hog yeah. hunting's all the time. Deer hunting's just getting started down by you. And gators. How about gators? Do you guys hunt any gators in Georgia? I know they're doing it in the oh, Carolinas. Yeah, yeah. We have a uh, we have a gator season in Georgia. It starts August the fifteenth. It is a it's a quota. Uh-huh. You got to draw for the tag. Yeah, there's good gator hunting here. Of course, it's getting better every year thanks to the conservation efforts of hunters. You know, yep. uh, alligators were almost extinct. You know, in our lifetime, and uh, the efforts and conservation uh, that hunters brought to the table has you know helped save the alligator. You know, just like the turkey, the rock, or the the elk. You know, of course, we never get the credit we deserve in the you know in, in some circles, but we know the truth is. And, uh, yeah, thanks to that, we have a great alligator season. Good, good ones killed uh, around here. You know, it was a 13-foot, 650-pound one killed. I think it's the biggest I heard of. Uh, there's been some good ones. 13-foot? That's a good gator. Yeah, he's a big one. Now, <clears throat> over in uh, Alabama, which is Lake Eufaula, and actually on the west side of the lake is Alabama, the east to... side would be Georgia, uh, a guy killed a... Uh, 15 foot uh, state record alligator in uh, in the in the creek there in the in the big lake. So, uh, there's definitely some some huge dinosaur alligators down there. Yeah, you know, and has anybody ever figured out how to age a gator? Well, I, I, they do. I see. You know, well, I, I say the back. That's a good question. And the reason why is you see. You see, when they comment on his age, it'll say he's estimated to be over 50 years old or over 70 years old. But unlike, uh, you know, some animals, you know, like a deer, you say, well, he was five and a half or, uh, you know, a, what, a turtle. Well, not even a turtle. I think they have trouble with reptiles in general. Uh, but they can tell you a dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus rex, was 55 million years old. So why can't they kill a self alligator? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that, but well, you know they got to be old. They even look old. They look old and unhappy. I mean, they look like they're just miserable. Well, they, they, who was it that told us how you can tell why a gator is so unhappy? Wasn't that? Uh, oh, it was on the Water person. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's water. Adam Sandler. Yeah, Adam Sandler. All them teeth, all them teeth, and no toothbrush. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon and I were just talking about that the other day. We were fixing a tooth on his gator mount. Yeah. <laughs> Mama said. My, my mama said they're always mad because they have all them teepees and no toothbrush. <laughs> That's what it was, yeah. That's right, yeah. He was from, now, now I think about it, he was an Auburn fan too, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Makes perfect sense. So. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but, yeah, now, Go ahead. I tell you where, the fact that the deer hunting passes, I don't know if you've been seeing on Facebook, but I'm going to tell you where the, there's two states right now as far as my Facebook, my little, my circle of, you know, 1,500, 2,000 connections, you know, that you see, but Kentucky and Kansas, there are some brutes hitting the ground, uh, archery kills. And then also yeah. a, a big youth bug in Kansas during, during the youth season that he killed us. Got the, and the question is, is he going to strip the velvet off of it for so it could be officially scored, or is he going to leave the velvet on for the for the mount? You know? Yeah, so, I uh, I seen that uh, that picture of that, and I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't take the velvet off of it. I wouldn't either because I don't think Who, who's this now. I don't think it'll be a state record. I, I my personal thing now, it, it could be a state youth record. It's a it I is a darn you, nice buck, that's for sure. But I wouldn't oh, yeah, take the velvet. Say, I wouldn't take it. That's a beautiful animal, man. Beautiful. Yeah. I was. I, I'm like you. I believe the velvet on. Yep. Yep. Did Did but, you uh, hear anything about that that boy in North Carolina? Have you heard about that one? Uh, I don't think I don't think I have. 
Yeah, there's one. There's a boy up there that supposedly shot a state record, and there's some controversy on that one too. Oh uh, well, you know, I the the the, the co-host from Trophy State of Mind got uh, sentenced this this past week. Did you see that? Mm-mm. In a TV show, Trophy State of Mind. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. I, huh. I I've seen it a couple of times. I'm not I'm not a fan of the show. I'm not blasting the show. Don't, don't you know? It is what it is. But one of the hosts there took an illegal. Uh, uh, whitetail on uh, land he didn't have permission to hunt, and he lost his hunt. He got fined over ten thousand dollars. He lost his hunt privileges for either four or five years. I know it's at least four, but I want to say five years. Ooh. Ooh. And I don't know if it's reciprocal. I don't know if it's just that state. It's, it's the state of Montana. Uh, if you got a computer there in, in the uh, in the booth there, you could uh, Google uh, huh. "trophy state of mind hunter sentence" or something. It'll probably come up, but. Uh, you know, this this is what this is what gives hunting a bad name. This, this is, it makes me makes me so angry sometimes at, at some of these guys, and they're good guys. Uh, uh, I, I met you know old uh, Boots, Boots fan. You've met him too, I'm sure. You know he got in trouble there for uh, shooting uh, illegal deer and lost his hunting privileges. You know when you are in a position like you are and like I am with my radio show. Yeah. The last thing we need to do is to be out there doing something illegal as far as the outdoors or, or, or hunting or fishing goes, and then it get plastered and blasted all over the media because it just gives ammunition to those who are trying to take our privilege away. And it just yeah. it irks me when I see a guy like that, a successful show, been on TV a while, feels the need or the pressure or, the, or has the ego to step across that line. It's a shame. Yeah, you know that's that's the thing you you got to really watch what you're doing. You got to think about the ramifications, and you got to be so yeah. careful. That's right. So, yeah, can you can you hang on one more, or you got to go? Well, uh, I need to get ready to go to church, so uh, I'm gonna have to cut it off here. And uh, okay, right. always a pleasure calling in. You guys have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, All right thanks a, a lot, one, Steve. Steve. Bye bye. All right, right bye bye.